to sleep. My name's Jason Newland and I'm here with Vinnie Andre Newland. And this is Whisper Wednesday. Oh yeah, Whisper Wednesday. It's yet another one of my new regular weekly slots. <laughs> I just, because this is kind of something that a lot of people in the past have known me for doing ASMR recordings or whisper recordings. So I thought that I'd do one a week. Uh, a let me boy to sleep version or a whisper version of let me boy to sleep so please only listen when you can safely close your eyes I am aware that not everyone likes the whisper stuff so if you don't like it then probably best not to listen to it but I do have lots of other different things. So now, there is, what is there? This Monday, Monday, what's Monday? <laughs> I can't remember. Monday's boring objects, that's it. And then you've got Tuesday, and that's Trivia Tuesday. Wednesday, and it's all Let Me Boy to Sleep recordings. Wednesday is Whisper Wednesday. And then... Sunday is Sunday Papers. So I haven't got anything... Oh, Q&A Friday as well. So now it's only Thursday and Saturday that have not got a day to themselves. Wow. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Sunday. Blimey. So this is not going to have a specific topic or anything, just a general, a general let me boy to sleep chat. Like I normally do. Uh, my website is jasonnewland.com and I'll also have a Facebook group called Jason Newland's Boring Group. Itchy nose. Oh. So that is, it's a private group, but you're welcome to join. Which just brings me to, to say hello to the latest new people. So, see you all. What is going on? Okay, maybe I can't see. Band unavailable. There's two people that are unavailable. Bix and Rudolph. So I don't know who they are. The... So there's a couple, you get the odd weird, um, <laughs> weird person, not weird person, but obvious uh, scams come in, but usually it's okay. I'm just trying to find, why is it not showing me? That's very 
very strange. Let me have a look. That's really weird. Okay, well, we've got a new person called Deborah. So, welcome, Deborah, who joined literally about two hours ago. Uh, you've also got Emily. Welcome, Emily. And Emily joined one day ago, I think. Also, okay, so Deborah, that was 49 minutes ago. I'm just seeing who else. I'll try and keep track. Okay, that's all there. There are some others, but it's not coming up on the screen for some reason. One of the benefits of joining Jason Newland's Boring Group on Facebook is I post stuff on there that I don't post anywhere else. For example, for Q&A Friday, I post, you know, ask, I ask for questions from people on the group so that I can answer those questions on Friday. I probably should post it today actually just so I can start getting some questions. Also I asked for subjects or top topics to discuss on my Monday's Boring Objects. And when I got a few of the subjects, I posted a poll and asked for people to vote on which one they wanted. And I ended up doing my first Monday's Boring Objects talking about tea bags. is a quite a boring subject I suppose. I do also have a YouTube channel and I do post my new recordings onto YouTube as well so it's another place you can you can watch them if you want. Um, the podcasts are available pretty much everywhere so it's quite easy to find. Just let me bore you to sleep. You can find it most places. Uh, podcasts and play, you know, things like that. I also post the the recording without music in the ten hour version onto Facebook. That was a long introduction. Didn't need to be that long, did it really? It's a lovely day outside, a little bit breezy, sunny, don't need a coat, it's not raining, it's nice, considering it's the, I think it's the 11th, no, is it the 11th today? It's not the 11th, no, it's the 18th, 18th of September today, Wednesday 18th. So the weather's pretty good. As per usual, which is what I normally do, even though it's technically I could edit and upload this today because it's only one o'clock in the afternoon, I will upload it, I'll edit it and upload it tomorrow morning first thing. That way, it's, I just like to separate the two, you know, make the recording when I've done the recording I can just switch everything off and forget about it without putting the extra pressure on myself to oh now I've got to edit it now I've got to process it and blah 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 and it kind of gives me a routine which is something that I uh, haven't had for a while not really and by organizing the week by day 
is as far as like doing a, a specific type of let me pour you to sleep recording on each day it keeps me focused and I don't know organized maybe keeps yeah, keeps me regular it's like the all brand of podcasting is yeah it does I, it's, it's an it's got this can you hear that creak it's not my body it's not my neck although it's it does it when I put my neck back it's the settee isn't this weird right if I was talking out loud like I do normally I guess like most people do when they talk Vinny would be all over me jumping all over me and like he has been the last few days but because I'm just here whispering he's gone to sleep I'm just stroking him gently and he's cuddled up to me lying down and he's it's a happy little boy this is very happy I'd say content there's also not much going on outside in the garden so I've got the windows closed but I have had the window open all morning so I've closed it drawn the curtains closed and I've closed the door so I shouldn't hear too much back sound not that it's gonna hugely affect me it's Vinny's reaction that affects me because when he starts barking loudly it's a little bit off-putting and like yesterday's recording he barked so much that it took a long time to edit the recording I think I must have lost about half an hour off of the recording just through him barking stopping, starting, taking a break and I'm trying to calm him down because the recording continues I don't stop the recording but yeah I've done a lot of these whisper recordings over the years it was generally deep sleep whisper hypnosis I used to call them and the re the way okay the reason I got into doing like complete recordings with with whispering was because I did I used to with my hypnosis recordings back in blimey 15 years ago I used to just talk but then as the recording progressed as well as slowing down I would also become quieter and often would end the recording with a whisper just because it seemed like quite a nice way to to kind of wind down the the recording you know and if the person had drifted off to sleep it seemed quite a nice way to almost not follow them but sort of it just seemed it seemed the right thing to do. Well, I had uh, somebody, well, more than one person, said to me, Why don't you make a whole recording just whispering? And another person, I think even before that, someone said to me, Oh, you're 
you're my favourite, you're my favourite ASMR person to listen to or to watch on YouTube. And this was like probably 2008, 2009 time. I didn't even know what ASMR was. And then somebody said, oh, you should do a whisper. And then um, Boston Chicky, I think she, she mentioned about doing an ASMR whisper recording. So I kind of took it a bit more seriously because she was, she had a successful YouTube channel. And I thought, okay, I looked into it a bit and I started doing those. I don't know how many I did to start with because I did a lot. I, I did have a habit of deleting stuff. And he just jumped. Hey, calm down. Come, baby. Calm down. Good boy. I'll leave you alone then. Come on. Lay down. Come on. Lay down. Good boy. That's it. He's still half asleep. I think I must, because I was stroking his head. I think it made him, it made him jump. Good boy, go to sleep. Go to sleep, sleep. Go to sleep, sleep, Vinny. Go to sleep, sleep. It is kind of funny that sometimes he does fall asleep listening to me. It's almost like he finds me boring. Which is a bit insulting, I guess, but hey, never mind. So today, I'm trying to think, anything happened today so far? I actually went to bed later than normal last night. So I made the recording later as well. So I probably finished the recording about nine o'clock. And then I ended up going to bed just before, well, maybe just after 11 o'clock. And I'm normally in bed by 10 these days. And then I, I woke up. I did wake up at just gone 12. And then I woke up about half one. But I just went back to bed. And then, before I know it, it's gone six o'clock, which is the latest I've got up for ages. I'm normally awake by five or four even. So, yeah, I guess I needed to sleep. But I had some strange dreams. Really, really strange dreams. And... I don't know where these dreams come from. But yeah. Oh, what I have done, I started listening to a new audio book. I listened to Audible. And the book I'm listening to is... Let me turn the volume down, just in case it... Okay, let's go out of this library. The Theories of Human Development. Theories of Human Development by Malcolm Malcolm W. Watson. So this is like another book that this this kind of fits in with the the Open University degree course that I'm starting in October. I wonder if I can get into that. I can talk to you about that. Open University. Okay, let's have a look. I don't always know. They're outside in the garden now shouting. They're talking, but they're talk 
shouting, you know. It should sign me in. Has it signed me in? Please, no, it's not. Word. Yeah, it's done. So I'm in. So let's have a look. I need to go to my <sighs> student home. I also started to do a one of the free courses as well. So here's me update study record access to your personal blog. So this is the student home. View emails. Why do people talk so loud when they're literally standing next to each other? I'm sorry, I should let it go. Let it go. I mean, literally, I could talk, I could whisper and someone three or four foot away would be able to hear me. And if I talked, if I spoke like that, if I talked at that volume into the microphone, like suddenly it would make you jump. If you can hear a hundred foot away, imagine what it's like when you're that close. Anyway, um, Students Association, it does distract me a little bit, if I'm honest, just a little bit. So loud, so loud. Okay, right. There's a the, my neighbour downstairs turns her music on when they're in the garden because she can't stand it. It's too loud, so she turns her music up really loud. So then I've got the vo I've got the loud music, and then I've got the voices. You can still hear the voices over the music. So, it's, yeah. And then the other neighbour turns their music on to block out the music of the neighbour downstairs. It's, you know, it's one of those things. Okay, study record. So let's have a look. So I'm doing a BSc on psychology in progress. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a real, real student. I'm a real boy. So the code is Q07. And qualification completion deadline 5th of October 2040. So what is it now? 2024. 34. 44. So it's okay, 24. 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 16 years. But I'm going to do it in six years. Um, so if for, for whatever reason I needed to stop, have a break, then I could. Education, age, regulations, dead flight, okay, I've got that. Your undergraduate student loan, what was that? Okay, so start studying. Once confirmed, your loan summary you intend to pay by part time tuition fee for the following module E104 Introduction to Childhood Studies and Child Psychology. The fee for this course 
which starts on the 4th or 5th of October, £3,636. And the total tuition fee charged to your loan will not ex to align with the part-time fee limit. The total fee charged to your part-time loan will not exceed six thousand nine hundred and thirty five. I don't know what that means. I understand the individual words, but the sentence does why would they charge more? Uh, so the please ensure that it has been if I go to the student portal I don't know what the Okay, I've already checked, it's all it's all sorted anyway. The student loan's been accepted, so I haven't got to do anything with that. So I'll go back, download a copy, a summary of your OU study. Okay. There is a summary of model blah, 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 blah. So introduction, psychology, so yeah. 30 this is 60 credits so for each each year like on a three year degree course it's 120 credits to make the 360 credits which is the uh, BA with honours because it's over six years I'm doing 60 credits a year so yeah, let's have a look, I'm not allowed to do any more I don't think than that, because it's part time so I have to stick to the, I think I do anyway, yeah I'm pretty sure, I'll look into it in the future anyway, I mean there might be, yeah no I'm not allowed to do more than part time, health centre, Computing guide How to sign up to Microsoft 365 account Apparently I need to be with them For this course Microsoft 365 is free And available to all new And continuing open university students Who are currently registered to study Excluding short courses and open learn if you're currently registered and studying, you should see a link to Microsoft 365 in Student Home under Tools. If you can't see this link, it might be because you're not fully registered. If you need to check your registration status, contact Student Recruitment. Okay. The credentials you'll need are your OU, email address, whatever that is, I don't know, and a password. If you're not sure, sure what your OU email address is, you can find it under contact details. Let's have a look. What's my OU email address? Permanent, my accommodation, permanent or long-term residence, yep. A telephone number, telephone number, cond, oh, got ya. So there's my email address, and then there's the Open University email address, which is a different one. My SST, I don't know what that stands for. Because this degree is part of the psychology and counselling course, like counselling department. So I've already got the counselling degree, but not with the Open University, that was actually with the Essex University. Okay. I'm just wondering, where can I find the actual details of the study your personal
personal identifier, update personal details, study record, choose your next module. I can't, how can I choose my next module? It's not even possible. In stage one, in, okay. I'm in stage one. So in stage one, you'll be introduced to some of the big topics in psychology and the academic skills for successful study. You'll start with one of three options, a core social science module covering criminology, sociology, and other related areas, or a broad introduction to psychology and counseling, or in this, in, Interdisciplinary, I can't even say the word, interdisciplinary, disciplinary childhood studies, which is the one I'm doing. These will set the scene for your first core psychology module, which explores the different ways that psychologists investigate how we think and behave and consider how academic research can be applied, applied in real life settings. So, uh, my next, the next one and I'm gonna be doing is encountering psychology in context. But that one won't be till next year, so it'll start what? February 2025. That. Okay. Um, no, I guess it will start in October as well. So I'll do that. It'll be October start. The module offers an accessible and engaging introduction to classic and contemporary psychological theory and research applied to a broad range of real world contexts. The module expected to start for the last time February 2033. So it's D120 for description. Let's have a look. The module offers an accessible and engaging introduction to classic and contemporary psychological theory and research applied to a broad range of contexts. You'll encounter core areas of psychology as set out by the British Psychological Society e.g. social, cognitive, developmental, biological and applied aspects of professional practice, e.g. forensic and counselling, in brackets. You will learn how psychologists have studied topics that directly affect people's lives in areas such as criminal justice, family life, aging and brain injury. You'll also explore how psychology can inform our understanding of magic and misdirection, performance and how people develop across the lifespan. The lifespan. Okay. I do wonder, um, as I look at that, I'm not 100% sure that's going to be next year. I think it is. I don't think it's an option. I think it's like I have to do that one as part of the degree. Hopefully, my plan is to get my new 
glasses before the degree starts. So I've got an optician's appointment tomorrow. Which means I'm gonna, it's gonna, oh blimey, I don't know how much it's gonna cost for the new glasses. I mean, it doesn't matter what the glasses look like for reading because no one's really going to be around I'm, I won't be outside reading I'll be inside but my day to day classes that's where it's going to come a bit weird I don't know because I need act light and dark shades I need anti-glare as well I think is what's kind of you necessary I, I'll, I'll see what they say I'm never going to wear contact lenses that's not going to happen but I will um, they said that if I need glasses which I know I'm going to because my eyesight has changed I just know it has I can I can see that it has. I mean, the other day, I was like looking, looking at this ant on the floor. It turned out it was an elephant. My eyesight's awful. It's just so I'm thinking it'll be good to get. My, well, yeah, we'll be get to get to be good to get my eyesight back to how it kind of should be, wearing the glasses. And it's one thing having eyesight that's a bit rubbish without glasses, but with glasses, it's supposed to be correct, isn't it? But then there's the eye strain that unfortunately I get from looking at the computer screen. Sometimes, if I spend too much time looking at the screen, I guess it's the light from the screen, but it, I get um, a bit of a pain in my eyes or my head, which is not good because I'm going to be needing to spend probably three hours a day once the degree starts studying and looking at a computer screen. And also reading, so <sighs> what I might try and do and see if I can get three pairs of glasses, one for reading, one for everyday use, you know, most of the time, and another one for computer screens. It might, yeah, it might be good thing to do. So what's the other thing? I, I'm not going to have bifocals anymore. I'm just going to have normal, I'm going to say normal screens, normal lenses in my normal day-to-day -day glasses. And when I want to read, because at the moment I have to look at the bottom bit of the glasses to read. Hopefully, when the glasses come through, so it'll probably be, they're set up to 10 days, so I should have them by the end of the month, which will be just in time for October. Then, I'll be able to spend a bit more time what, you know, reading without eye strain, because at the moment, it's not just eye strain, I get neck strain, because I have to literally look right down at the lenses or look up and look across you know look down if I'm reading because it's just a little bit of the bomb that's no good I need the whole lens to be reading <laughs> I want it to read for me so yeah I hope that that will sort it out it's just the cost which I'm a little bit concerned about 
it's just I get free artists which is nice and they usually give me a discount and I'll get a sometimes they do like a, a free frame like you know two frames for the price of one or something like that last time I just got exactly the same glasses twice which is good because my other pair of glasses got damaged but I've had these for probably five years four years five years so maybe four years actually so it's definitely time to get them changed and what I've noticed is the lenses get scratched so I might see if there's any kind of anti-scratch lens because I've noticed they just like over time they just get scratched and even Vinny he'll like jump up at me and he might hit my glasses with his talons with his talented talons and there are scratches I mean these ones aren't as bad as my other pair but they, they got bad they were really a bit messy plus they get out of shape and it keeps sliding down my nose so I need I don't know I'm thinking about getting <laughs> what's that thing where you get an, a, not an elastic band but like something that attaches to the end of each earpiece and it goes over around the back of your head to keep the glasses on I might do that although no probably not yeah probably not so that's just one one more thing done um, I'm not sure if I mentioned yesterday that my blood sugar level's good so I'm not diabetic I'm no longer pre-diabetic so that was nice to hear I'm literally well I tell you the weird thing I shouldn't really tell you this but to celebrate you know what I did I went out and bought cakes two sausage rolls a Cornish pasty a cheese and tomato roll a scone a baked grout tart and two pieces of cake I mean, well, it's, it's, that's a bit excessive all I got left and that was yesterday all I got left from there is one sausage roll and the scone I mean I must have been the sugar overload was ridiculous but I've been so good for probably four months now I wonder if I put weight on next thing I need to really be looking at is my diet because although I've lost weight and I've cut down on sugar my daily diet is not particularly great I need to start being a bit more regular with I just maybe just get into a routine having salad I've got rice I need to make it okay if the if the food doesn't taste at least a little bit nice I just don't want to eat it and right rice is okay but not just on its own it's just I need to have something with the rice and salad I need to have something with the salad so I'm, I'm gonna figure it out and then what I'll do is I will I'll, I'll set a kind of a regular eating pattern over the next probably starting next month oh I'm not gonna have a pizza on Sun on Saturday evening 
folks is boxing. It's Anthony Joshua and Dubois and loads of other big fights on Saturday evening. Well, Saturday afternoon onwards at Wembley Stadium. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get a, a pizza from Domino's hopefully on Saturday, which will be the first time I've had a well all year. I don't think I've had a Domino's pizza f for yeah the whole of this year. So it'll be the first one. You know, I used to get Domino's so often. The lady on the phone knew me. Like she knew my voice before I even said anything. Hello, Jason. How are you? Okay. My name's Elisa. It was just like, we became friends on the phone. She kept saying, you should come in and see me. But I was a bit worried about the oh, disappointment, you know. In case she didn't look as good as she sounds. Da -da 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 -da. No, me. I would worry that she'd be disappointed that, because I don't know, I'm pretty sure that what I've been told, even, not even in a horrible way necessarily, but some people are surprised that my face doesn't match my voice. And I guess it's a disappointment maybe, but I can't do a lot about it. Unless I just make my voice sound a bit more. No, t to be fair, if I made my s if I made my voice match my face, I'd have to stop doing podcasts because it would be uh, it'd be awful. <laughs> I can't do an impression of it because it's a, s a whisper recording. If it was a normal one, I could do an impression of what it might sound like. It wouldn't sound good. I don't know, Hunchback of Notre Dame. Like a Wicked Witch or something like that. It definitely... Words will come in. Something like that. It, it definitely sound weird. But then, does anybody's voice match their face? It does if you know the person, doesn't it? Although sometimes it doesn't. It's weird, you know, if you ever meet someone and you see them, but you still can't believe that they sound how they sound. Like, you, it just doesn't match. It's, your voice is wrong. Maybe it's like, really deep or really high pitched or just it sounds different to how they look not in a bad way just in a it's all judgmental isn't it it's all expectations I guess but if you know someone we kind of get used to it don't we I mean I've spoke to loads of people on the phone and Occasionally, they did look like they sounded. Occasionally. Well, you know, my... Not... They didn't... My... Imagination. Well, I'd kind of... If they hadn't told me... Like, if someone tells me, Oh, I'm brunette. And I'm seven foot nine and... Eight hundred pounds and... Constantly knitting, you know, and like if you see someone like that, I'll, hi dad, it's, it's like that must be someone that the person, but if you don't know, I mean, I, I remember I had, I had a blind date back in 2004. I think it was January 2004 and I, I realised from previous experience that there's no point talking.
talking for a long period of time before meeting them. It's just pointless. You just go up and meet them as soon as possible and then go from there because if if there is if there that mutual attraction isn't there and I don't mean necessarily physical but as far as because even personality I've, I've gotten so well with people on the phone even people that I've seen in person you know like I've met someone got to know them a little bit gave them my telephone number and then we start chatting and decide to go out for on a date I've gone so well with that person and then on the date nothing there's like no chemistry even though previously there seemed to be chemistry when we were getting to know each other in, in real life but as soon as we went from being friends to a date it something changed I don't know maybe it's because when I'm friends with someone I keep my clothes on in a restaurant I don't know it's yeah that might not have helped plus I mean it was in a restaurant as I think about it now maybe she was distracted by the parachute yeah possibly so you know if you can have her I think on a first date don't take your drum kit with you it's just little things that is it can be <laughs> I mean I remember once there was this uh lady that worked in the insurance company and she starts smiling at me and I start smiling back at her I didn't know why she was smiling at me and we started saying hello and we didn't know why we were saying hello to each other but we ended up going for a date during lunch hour so we went to the pub and we got on okay but she had a boyfriend I don't know why I don't know if she was coming out for a drink with me but she had a boyfriend and it was so I like okay just good luck and I said she, she said something about oh we need to get back to work but you haven't eaten you haven't had anything to eat and I said don't worry I got this and I pulled out a tuna fish roll out of my pocket I've never seen anyone laugh so much in their life she was literally could not stop laughing she found it hilarious that we spend the whole time and I had a tuna fish roll in my sack in my pocket <laughs> just I mean it was a bit warm to be honest it's a bit smelly but tuna fish is smelly isn't it So we kind of stayed friends after that. And there's one weird thing I remember the one of my colleagues came up to me. This is probably a year later, and he said, "Oh, um, I like that girl." I said, "Yes, yeah, sir. I want to ask her out." Yeah, why are you telling me? Well, the rumour is that you and her got it off, got it, got it together. I said, no. No, I didn't say, I, 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 I said, yeah, yeah, true. Oh, yes, we did it everywhere, on the roof, under the desk, inside the coffee machine. Yeah, 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 yeah. We even did it inside an envelope that was being sent to one of the customers the quotation in yeah I mean come on like he couldn't get past the idea that me and her dated but we didn't date we had one lunch time together but she was nice she was a nice 
person. But, you know, she was dating someone, I think, that... I don't know if he worked at the company or not. There's a lot of that going on. I never dated anyone that worked there. It wasn't through choice. <laughs> oh, I tell you what. I made a bad decision. I've made lots of bad decisions, but this was a... This was quite monumental at the time. One of the receptionist ladies started being friendly to me and I thought that maybe she liked me bearing in mind you know I was still a young man back then like 32 33 I was wasn't old I was old compared to some of the people there I guess they they thought of me as being old I remember when I pulled my phone out um, so I was at my desk and with my there was a team on the desk lots of different people but there was this like 20 year old or 19 year old female and she was surprised that I had a modern telephone a modern mobile oh I thought you'd have one of those big brick ones attached to a backpack I mean what because I was, she must have seen me as being like 70 or something. So, anyway, I, I was going past the receptionist sometimes, so twice into work and out of work, then twice at lunchtime, twice at each break. So it's like it's at least six times a day. If I was, if my shift was during the day, sometimes I'd work till the evening, nine o'clock or something. So it'd be less, but on some weeks it's like six times I'd walk past her. Anyway, I asked her out, and she said no. And it left a very awkward moment. Because I don't I'm like taking my pants off or nothing weird like that, but I just didn't know what to do because I knew that I was gonna have to keep walking past her and I couldn't afford plastic surgery or to get another job really. And it was just, yeah, it was embarrassing. It's weird, because I just, like, I thought she liked me. But she, well, she might have liked me, but she didn't like me like that. But she wasn't, like, young, young. She was probably only a few years younger than me. I mean, she might have even been my age, I don't know. I mean, to me, 33 is young now. But, yeah, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the whole asking people out. It just seems so unnecessary. It's almost like the, all the pressure seems to be on me. Of anyone else in the whole world, it's all on my shoulders. Obviously, not. Oh, bless this little baby. Yeah, that's one good thing about being 90 years old now. I ain't got really worry about going, you know, dating or asking anyone out. Although, see, I can't remember what it's like now. It's been such a long time. I haven't dated anyone like proper boyfriend, girlfriend. The last time I did that was I can't even remember. Really. I mean I had like a 
friend that I was seeing in, I don't know, 2010. Oh no, I did have a girlfriend in 2011. So 2011 is the last girlfriend I had. That's a long time. I've met women and stuff, but she was the last kind of going out for dates and stuff like that. She was from Romania. It wasn't her fault. <laughs> she was lovely. I'd like to go to Romania. I'd like to go to... I've always liked that look, that kind of gypsy, dark-haired, traditional Roman, Romany gypsy look. It's always been quite um, intriguing, like a witch, not you know, not a witch witch, but kind of just. Someone you'd expect to see in a haunted castle. And I'm not saying on a bad way. <laughs> and we had someone here at the petrol station. Turned up and I, I swear she was like. Just. Like the old movies. She had like dark curly hair. She looked. She was from Romania. And just. It's like, oh, I don't know, I can't really explain it. She just looked a certain way that was so, wow, never seen, in person, never seen anyone like that. She had five legs. It's amazing. Oh, I mean, just wow. It's got to be weird though. How do you get shoes? Because you you got to buy two and a half pairs of shoes every time. No, she actually had five legs. It is possible. Oh, I had a trivia. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm laughing because yesterday's trivia Tuesday was a bit poor, to be honest. Like trivia wise, I just I need to do a bit more work for that one. I didn't come up with much good trivia. I mean, it was okay, but I just the problem was I, I started talking about cars or automobiles, and I have zero interest in that. So it's it might be trivia, but at the same time, it's. You know, I mean, tell me something interesting about a bridge, and that I'd find that mildly interesting. But cars, apart from self driving cars, or flying cars, or I don't know, cars that can go a thousand miles an hour. Things like that I find interesting, but generally just cars. Yeah, because I've never driven, I don't, I've never really caught the bug of having a car, but maybe I would have done had I got my driving lessons, got my driving test. I might have really loved driving, although I do wonder because it's something that I'd like to do. I'd have to have a driving license to do this. I had the money to buy it, but to get a caravan there and travel around the country. And I could just travel around with Vinny and just park up and go to sleep and just go hiking or just 
just visit nice places and talk about it on the podcast. Talk about what I've been up to. I think that would be quite a nice way to spend a couple of years. Because I guess I think that's probably how long it would take. If I went to every town in the country. And then maybe out to France and expanding through Europe maybe. So that would take another few years. And just keep coming back. I still have this place. But that would just be a separate thing. It'd be, yeah, it'd be, it needs to be quite cheap to run. But it would just be me and him. So as long as it was warm in the winter, that's all that really matters. And it works. Either that or I'd need to get someone that could drive to come with me. But then that means I've got a human human around. Just does that defeat the object of being free and escaping and just floating away kind of or just travelling. Oh that sounds nice. I don't actually know how long I've been talking on air. Any idea, anyone? So this won't be... This won't be a two-hour recording, I don't think. Like yesterday... I think yesterday is about an hour and 45 minutes. The day before was over two hours. This one won't be that long, I don't think. Just yeah, doesn't need to be. I guess because I'm not focusing on a specific subject. There's possibly less to say. Maybe, I don't know, I'm so relaxed I could easily fall asleep. So easily. <sighs> Just drift off. about just resting my head. Especially having Vinny cuddled up to me fast asleep. a breeze outside. It just feels nice. 